And we have flop quads. Ho! Oh, we flop quads in a squeeze pot pre-flop. Look how much money's in there. 70k, dude. I don't think I want to 4-bet with ace-king here. I'm just going to flat. We raise another the gun, get a call, and a squeeze. I don't want to get in 100 blinds here. So we call, and we'll just pay post-flop. Out of position to two people, which is a little annoying, but I think this is the best option. I think this is the best option. And it's an ace-10-7 flop, which is great for us. Start with the check, though. The story they're telling is that they have... The same hand as us, ace-king, or they have an ace-queen suited, or they have aces-kings, queens-jacks, right? So we're going to let them continue with their strength and their bluffs as well. They're going to have some, some random bluffs too. So let's see. That's 7,900, okay. It's quite a small bet here. It's one quarter of the pot. I think we'll just call. I don't think there's enough of a reason to raise yet. And that's a terrible turn. <laughs> it's the worst turn in the deck by far. There is no worse turn. Because the hand we're mostly concerned about here, if we go to a turn, is ace-queen suited. Uh, and pocket queens and pocket jacks have like two outs each, right? Um, so it's a really, really bad turn. It goes check, check, check. I think we should check the river as well. When you think about it, what are we beating? We're beating kings, we're beating jacks, we're chopping with ace-king, and we're beating uh, pre-flop bluffs, right? And we're losing to queens, we're losing to ace-queen. Over bet, this is ace-queen all day. This is ace-queen all day. Uh, it's an overbet as well from Pablo. I think I'm just going to fold. I mean, totally makes sense. Uh, Ace-queen suited. So I guess we have to pick a suit here. Is it diamonds or spades? <laughs> Let's go diamonds. Ace-queen of diamonds. We won't know, but I'm not going to call the overbet. I just think there's almost no chance we're good with one pair. Defend with the fives against True Believer. He goes check check. Uh, I'm going to bet this turn. I think I have the best hand a lot. And I want to protect my hand from a lot of bad river cards. So get some value. Not give free cards to 7-8, for example, you know. Going to call against Jan Bednar. Call a flop bet as well for 3,300. King of the turn. And another bet. But again, I think we have a call here with our pair of nines. And then the river is bad. Just a really bad run out, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Just a terrible run out. It's frustrating, but we fold. Raise it up. And Mark in the big blind just calls. Okay, Jack-9-4 in the flop, two spades. I think we want to bet uh, on this flop. I also think we want to bet on the bigger side as well, just to try and get some money in the pot. But we see a lead, actually. So I'll raise. Raise it up, raisey daisy And see how Mark responds to this. And we get a call. Six on the turn, 25,000 in the middle. Probably should have made it bigger with the flop raise. Because we can bet like this, but it gives such a good price to a lot of draws, which we don't want. So I'm going to overbet myself and try and represent one of those draws, like a queen 10 or a 10 8 or a spade or whatever. But I think it's my mistake on the flop. I should have check raised to a size where I could shove the turn comfortably. I didn't leave myself very many good options there. So that's my bad. The ace tab we raise and we get called by Gilly, the big blind. 9 8 6 flop. Check back. I, I don't like checking back. Problem is if we bet, we can get check raised relentlessly. We don't want to bet fold this hand. We also don't really want to face a lead on the turn with this hand either. Because it's just a, it's a tough one, you know? It's just a tough hand to play here. On the turn, we pick up an open ender. Thankfully, we see a small enough bet. We're getting 4 to 1 odds here. We need about 20% equity, which we don't quite have with our open ender. Sometimes an ace is good. Sometimes they're bluffing and our ace high is good and they shut down. Sometimes a 10 is good. Sometimes we have implied odds when we make our hands. So I think it's a very easy call here against the sizing. Um, another option is to raise as well and put pressure on like a six or an eight. That's also a choice we can make, but go for the call. I don't know. I might like that a little bit more. It's easy to say when we see the jack peel off, like, oh, I wish I would have raised the turn. I'm not sure which it is, but uh, against the big bet of the river, we'll fold and move on. Uh, a little bet, 3,500 on the 3-3-4. We do have an over pair. And we like to protect our equity with the tens. We're gonna re-squeeze against Mullen Jr., friend of the stream, but uh, decent little hand we have going on here. Okay, take that down. And I'm gonna play passively with Ace Eight. Uh, I think it's it's an okay Ace. Very dry board though. Um, so I'm just gonna check call and let bite me. Hopefully do some bluffing. Eight on the turn is beautiful, giving us two pair. Call again. Deuce of Spades in the river. Not too worried about them betting a two. They could have backdoor spades, but we have a great hand, so like calling. Well, that's pretty unlucky. <laughs> that's pretty unlucky there. They have us pip pre-flop by one, but then also we turn the two pair. 
uh, we probably would have stacked off on dry roundouts anyways, to be fair there. Ace queen raise call on a squeeze from Jaquim. I think ace queen is good enough. Pablo throwing the fish at me after he wins the pot. You shouldn't be doing that, Pablo, man. Come on, bro. I mean, you can throw the fish after I win a pot, but if you think I'm a fish, don't tap the don't tap the glass, my friend. You know, come on, don't tap the glass. Uh, so squeeze pot here, bit of half pot on the nine five deuce. We'll continue. Decent amount of good turns. We have the backdoor queen of spades. We're in position. Catch some of their bluffs as well. And now in the turn, we picked up top pair, so we really like our hand now. Cool. Against ace ten, beautiful. There we go. 200,000, we get a double up, which is very nice. And uh, 210K, actually, is pretty good. Ace King, raise, call, squeeze. We're going to four bet all in with the Ace King against my guy. Okay, cool. Take that, 92,000. That's a good chip up. We want that. Bet 6,300 here. Keep betting. The four of clubs turn. And I'm going to bet 39K here as well. Going for the triple barrel against Petrov V who unfortunately has the top pair, tin kicker. Open it up, get three bet from thanks, bro. So the question is, do we go with our sevens or not? And we do, actually. In a bounty tournament, people's three betting ranges are gonna be wide enough here. The bounty and play that. Sevens for 18 blinds is a value hand. So we're gonna get it in. We are unfortunately up against eights, which sucks. <laughs> sucks to be up against eights with sevens, but so be it. We get check raised here, which is cool. Let's let them do their bluffing thing. We're out of that 55 gladiator though, and I'm okay with it for now because we do have a lot of tables, so. Let's go down to seven tables then. They keep betting on the turn. Uh, Diamond comes in, so I don't want to raise now anymore. I think we just want to call. River's a king. Hand is very strong blind versus blind here. It is, of course, possible our opponent has a flush, but our hand's still pretty strong. Do we bet on the river? I don't think so. When they check raise on the flop, they're representing that they have a seven or a diamond draw or a straight draw, right? If they have a seven, it's likely going to be a better kicker. If they have a diamond draw, they've got there. If they have a straight draw, they miss, and they're not going to give us any money. So, uh... Even though we have such a strong absolute strength hand with trip sevens or trip nines or whatever that was, um, I don't think we need to raise. Gonna bet with the queen three here. Ace jack. We can call closing the action. We can also squeeze bluff here too though. And I think I'll squeeze and then fold to an all in. Our hand doesn't play very well multi-way, but it has good blockers to pretend that we have the nuts here and hopefully it pays off. Let's see. And against our friend of the stream, Gilly, who calls 10 8 4, two clubs on the flop. Not a very good flop for us. Not a very, very good flop for Gilly either, though. Neither of us are going to hit this very often, so I'm going to continuation bet here. And then decide if I want to continue on the turn or not. Of course, on an ace or a jack, we're going to stack off with our hands. But the question is do we want to target like smaller pairs or pairs that didn't flop a set by shoving the turn? Or do we think it's too likely that Gilly has like big pairs and stuff? That's kind of the equation. And the ace queen we're waiting on in the 320 satellite. We get called in two spots, actually, which is pretty interesting. And a squeeze all in from Tyler Gocher. I think we're going to call here. Uh, I think ace queen suited is strong enough. There's a lot of dead money in the pots. And Tyler knows that these two ranges are not strong at all. So they can shove, like, middling pairs, you know. We're up against kings, though. Rip city life, man. We can re-enter this satellite, and we will. We will try again. Uh, but hopefully we can spin this <laughs> this one big blind back to something respectable. We'll see anyways ace eight here We're gonna call on the flop the ace six. We're out, but we'll re-enter here. You go. There's one re-entry in the satellite, so we'll try again And we'll check raise with the nut flush draw Call again here ace three against nine eight uh, Super lame wait we win with the running threes. Okay. I thought we lost. I only saw one three there. I was like, oh, man Got a lot of equity against that hands. We're back into the 320 here. We got a friend, Eric LeBlond, on our table. Good luck, Eric. He's up to 6,400 with our ace queen. Get a call. And we're going to get a bet against Pablo. This is much better for our range than Pablo's. We have a gut shot here. Uh, so we can enter the check calls, but I think take advantage of how wide the range is going to be here and just bet our hand instead. So we'll bet 17.6 on the turn. And I will value bet ace queen now, which is a thin value bet at this point, but I think it's fine to value bet on the river. And just send the stealing car here, just, you know. We can put in a check raise here. I'm going to give it a go, actually. We need this to work immediately about half the time, and then, of course, we could pick up equity later on in the hand as well. Let's see if it works here. It's kind of sneaky, you know. Turns a king of clubs, <laughs> which is crazy. 
Uh, here goes check check. We flop top pair. We're gonna check again on the turn now. I was re looking to check raise, but after it goes check check, I don't think we can go bet jam for the bounty anymore. Nine thousand. Call. Oh, God. But on the turn we call here. Rivers at eight. What a beautiful turn though, right? Let's see what RMS has. Uh, trip tens. Wow. Okay. We stay alive, which is really good. I mean, pretty unlucky turn and hand to be up against when we check raise as well. Here with the a7, I think we have a good bluff catcher, you know. Um, the queen is not great. I don't think they're necessarily going to value but a queen, though. So we're really worried about a king. Spades miss. Straight draws miss. I think we're too high up in a range to fold here, especially with the bounty. So we call. Uh, they do turn the king, though. So we are at 5k now. We've had a lot of unfortunate outcomes as well, though, which are kind of frustrating. So I don't know. We're hanging in there, doing our best anyways, and see what happens. See what comes from it. Yikes, man. This is 100 seats. There is re-entry available still as well. I think I call. It's pretty dang close, though. Who shoves aces for 27 blinds? Who does that? <laughs> uh, we win. 16k. I never thought it was going to be aces there. Or kings. Oh, it's just like such a big shove. And the queen 10 in the 3 bet pot, we actually flop really well. We flop second pair, which isn't great, but we flop a flush try to go along with it. So equity-wise, we're doing great, you know. Especially against an ace king, ace queen, you know, even against aces, kings, queens, we're doing fine. So we're just gonna bet here. And we flop quads. Ho! Oh, we flop quads in a squeeze pot preflop. Look how much money's in there. 70k, dude. Check back. We know no one has a queen, and there's only one nine left. We have quads. We also have like a gazillion combos of full houses. Because <laughs> we have we have everything. No one can have anything here. We have to check again. The likelihood that someone has a nine is very small. The likelihood someone has a queen is zero. We check. We can't get any money yet. What are they going to call with, man? Now someone at least can have a straight. So we'll go for a little bit on the river here. Make it like, I don't know, 30,000. Make it 30K and I don't know. Hopefully someone has Jack 10 and tries to look us up here. Because quads are good, man. <laughs> Please tell me someone has the other nine. There we go. All right. Get a little call. I wonder what Alexander had there. Jack, Jack, 10, 10. Yes, yeah, so they had the straight. And uh, we take it down, 300k. It's in our right hand, quads. And we focus on the parts. You're exactly right, my friend. We're gonna call with ace king against ace. We're flipping, no! Come on, dude, win the flip. Ace or king, one time, dotty. No! Ah, yeah, chat, I've had enough, chat. We're back to 10k in the satellite. Dang it, I really wanna get into the 3200. I really, really do. And we get three bet from Giselle. We're gonna four bet with the queens all day. And hopefully, hopefully, chat, Get some progress going in this 215 weekender. Come on, man. Come on with the queen and the queen. Gets ace queen. Beautiful. You love it. You love it. I love it. We all love it. Let's go, chat. 146. 146. It's a good spot to be in. Gonna fold the queen nine. Tens here. We're gonna three bets to 18,000. Actually, check back here. We three bet Aaron quite a bit, but our tens don't really want to play all in pot right now, you know? So I think we just start with the check back and go to a turn, which is an eight, and see a pretty sizable bet. We're going to call. Uh, but I don't want to see a river bet. Like, there's no way I want to see a river bet here. The river, river's okay, but not great. Some additional hands that are beating us. Quite a few, right? Uh, check, check, lose to king jack. Any king, ace king, king queen, king jack, king ten. Also any seven, but also any of the sets, any of the two pair like suited connectors. It's just a lot of things. Like our hand is pretty weak, so pretty interesting with the seven eight. We see bet get a call from uh, Chow Rosario. Rosario. Turn is an eight. Check check. River is a seven. We have two pair. Not a great two pair, but two pair. And we take it. That's good enough. Min rays. We're going to shove here and uh, big dreams. It's a big hand. It's important, man. It's an important hand here. It's for a $3,200 entry into the WPT8 Max on Saturday. We get four bets. This should be very, very strong. This should be like Queens Plus and Ace King, basically. Uh, I don't even think Jax should shove here, to be honest. That's my guess. Queens Plus and Ace King. Maybe Jax are in there, too. So, in other words, we should be in really rough shape here. <laughs> this is what I mean. Uh, Ace King, Ace King, Jax. It's a pretty bad overcall by Jax as well. The, in this case, they yeah, they get punished for it. It's a pretty bad overcall with Jax, though. Because, again, you're just trying to get in the top 50. One and three get a seat. You can't take that risk. R. Davidson has, like, all the chips. And, unfortunately, we're not going to get into the 3K through that mega satellite. We'll have more chances this week. And, hopefully, we can uh, 
to make it pay off. Pick a raise from Giselle D. We call. Turn is not a diamond. Thank you. Not a diamond turn. Love to see it. Better 36k. Again, call. We pick up a gut shot to go along here. We still have top pair, which is great. Uh, they can have all sorts of diamond draws and straight draws. River pairs the board king, which is also just great. Um, so, yeah. I am loving our situation right now. King 10 against King Jack. We are out of the tournament. GG. That sucks. <laughs> I mean, it's a sucky river. We're probably paying off the river either way, but it's unfortunate, of course. Wow. I'm feeling optimistic about this hand with the aces. Good ace queen. Okay. It's a good flop. And dead on the turn. Happy to see that. We will take it down. We chip up very nicely to about 200k. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Look at this, man. Whew. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right. So do we want to check raise on the flop? Or do we want to call? Probably just call, right? I mean, I don't know what turns of rivers are really going to stop strong aces from continuing to bet. Hopefully they don't have ace-king, <laughs> because if they have ace-king, we now lose, and this is sick. Uh, but I think on this turn, we just call turn, and then call river unless it's uh, an ace or a king, basically. Nine is fine. Check raise going in. This needs to work directly about 58% of the time. But we have equity too when called, so it's, we don't have to rely on it working that often. But Seven on the turn. I'm going to keep bluffing here and then probably shut down on the river. But I think the, a lot of the bluffs we have are going to be gut shots, which will be 8x or 2x, basically. So I'm going to keep betting and see if we get credit now. It's a bit of a tough one because a lot of two pairs can call and... Uh, Wow, three on the river. Well, they don't have very many eights, I don't think. So I'm going to bet. I'm going to try and them, get them to fold a chop because I think they likely they, they have an eight as opposed to we can win an extra 125 here. I think we're going to be a profitable shove. It's brutal if they have an eight. We just torched like everything. But uh, if they don't, oh my goodness, they have eight, nine. Oh my goodness, they have eight, nine. What a terrible turn. Oh, and what a terrible river as well, dude. If it's not that river, we get away from our hands. Oh my goodness, man. Ah, oh, so tilting, dude. Check raise flop, just bink turn, like good bluff card. They make the uber nuts and then river. We both make a straight and we just need to shove to try and fold them off a chop because math. Because like how many 8x in the range do they have that they decide to bet flop with as opposed to check? You know, it's just like a perfect checking card. It's just perfect. All right, our ace jack, we might spin it up a little bit here. We'll see. It's a good flop anyways. The nines were three betting against uh, B26. Checking on the queens and threes. Really bad flop for him. Pretty decent for their range as well. Check, check again on the turn. River's an eight. Ace jack wins here. And it's a pretty frustrating spot, I think, with nines. We're pretty high up in our range, though. So we call. They can value bet wide. Um, but I still think we should call because when you think about our checking twice range, we have a lot of give ups, like a lot of ace highs that would rather fold here, you know. So we'll call and lose to the queen jack. Fair enough. I don't think that makes our call bad, right? We have to think about their whole game plan and strategy and how much we need to call on the river as well. Because if we just always fold the river when we check twice, it's just like we're just uh, hemorrhaging money. And we don't have that many strong things going to the river, so... King nine against King Jack. And that's it in that one. We get a $6 bounty in the 27, but some unfortunate luck there to bust out of that tournament. Aces. For love at the top set. <laughs> yeah, fast lane, Rachel. Let's go. Would love a squeeze here, right? I'd love to just inflate the size of the pot a bit. But we go to a flop, queen a4, all clubs. So we like our hand. I, I think going for a small bet here is good. We would do that with king, queen, ace, queen, aces, kings. Um, not queens. Sets are eights or fours, probably want to go for a bigger bet. And then we might do it with just like random club hands as well. But let's try and get some money in the pot here. The bet just over a third. I almost went one click higher there, but I think, I think it's okay to start. Gonna keep betting on the turn. Quick call from Bolton Brown. And if it's us against Bolton Brown on the river, we're gonna go for the bounty, of course. See what Stocko does. If they raise, we are not super happy about our spot, but... 
And on the river, I'm gonna go for a bet less than all in so that we give a better price to uh, Bolton Brown. I mean, they're actually all in, but we risk less against Stocko. Like if they fold and they raise, we might even be able to fold. But it's a call and a raise. <laughs> oh, in what world do we have the best hand here? In what world? The problem is, is it 16,000 to win 125,000 plus the $13 bounty, right? So the math in this situation is probably we need to win one in eight times. So can Stocko do this with ace queen or king queen or queen jack? I mean, maybe, I don't know. I wouldn't, but they could. What does Bolton Brown have? I don't know, man. It's really tough to say. Like, it's pretty sick, I think. Like if it's a 50-50, like only call if you have the best hand where their hands already folded. But based on the price, I think, you know, one out of eight times, this is gonna work well for us and we're gonna end up making some money. So yeah, we'll just call and accept that, you know, five out of six times we're losing here, but so be it, basically. Queen 10. All in there with the sevens for 55 nine. Uh, and four bets from I always have. It's, man. <laughs> How sick is this today, man? Pretty uh, difficult. 